Um, now this one might look like the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator. Yeah? I mean, it looks like that way. But we see that we can simplify this again. Just like we should simplify by factoring, here we have this in a condensed binomial form. So what I'm going to do is expand that out. That's x minus 1 squared, which is x minus 1 times x minus 1, which hopefully you guys know is x squared minus 2x plus 1. Right? Don't want to do x squared plus 1 or something like that. All right, so now we see that actually the degrees are exactly the same. So then what do we do when the degrees are the same? When the degrees are the same, yeah? A or B. Yeah, you're just taking the leading coefficient of your numerator, dividing it by the leading coefficient of your denominator. Well, the coefficients here are 1 and 1. So my horizontal asymptote per the horizontal asymptote test is y equals 1 over 1, or just y equals 1. Vertical asymptote. Vertical asymptote is, again, my denominator equal to 0. Now, again, I wanted to check for holes. Um, but this is factorable to x minus 1 times x minus 1. But then I look over here, and I see I can't factor this, actually. There's not two numbers that multiply to give me 4 that add to me 1. right? So before I even get to that point, I just know there's nothing that's going to divide out. So I'm at least good there. Okay? So it's not a hole. I have asymptotes. So my vertical asymptote, I'll take the square root of both sides x minus 1 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. Square root to get rid of the square. I thought you said Vertical asymptote is the values that make the denominator equal to 0. The x, that's what I'm telling you. Be very careful with how you guys are doing this. x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. Or the shortcut is just taking the numerator, setting it equal to 0. Now. I previously have been trained on factoring so many times because I've done so many problems in this class that I realize, oh, this is non-factorable. So therefore, I should automatically look at using quadratic formula. But before I even do the whole quadratic formula, I want to test the, do you remember what this is called? Yeah, but do you remember what that called in there? It starts with a D. Oh, <laughs> discriminant, discriminant. It's called the discriminant. And basically what you're doing is you're taking the what's under the radicand of the square of the, um, what you're doing is basically testing the discriminant. And if the discriminant is negative, then you know you're going to have complex solutions because you have a negative under the radical. So I'll just plug in 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4. And I get negative 15. So if I was to solve this using the quadratic formula, I'd be having i's. Right? So do we, are we concerned about our imaginary, comp, our imaginary zero, our x intercepts? No, right? Yes. I just plugged in the discriminant. b squared minus 4 times a times c. 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times 4, which gives me negative 15. Okay? So therefore, with doing as minimal work as I can, I can understand that there's no x-intercepts. For the y-intercept, I'm just going to look at constant over constant, which is y equals 4 over 1, which is just equal to 4. So quadratic formula, guys. Fair game. Can't